So my interest is uh, vibration of civil structures. I'm a civil engineer and I'm particularly interested in human-induced vibrations and so I've uh, entitled my uh, talk Controlling Unruly Structures. So, well, what is an unruly structure? Well, in my mind, something like uh, London Millennium Bridge. Um, how many of you are familiar with the problems with the London Millennium Bridge? OK, I'm glad about that because it's surprisingly long ago, actually. It's 13 years ago now, so most of you, were, I guess, were about seven or eight at the time. So um, it used to be a fairly recent one, but uh, uh, not so much now. But uh, this is the opening day, June 2000, um, and essentially the bridge started moving. People timed themselves with the bridge because that's the easiest way to walk. And uh, we got this very severe level of vibration. And now, perhaps a more extreme example. OK. So this is a particularly Germanic phenomenon, may I say? <laughs> of people, uh, football supporters, going around and trying to excite stadiums. And uh, it's obviously not particularly good for the structure, but our big concern, actually, is not so much the structure, but more the people inside. People panic and rush for the exit. You might end up with a kind of Hillsborough type crushing problem. So that's really uh, what we're concerned with there. But there's some more mundane issues which I'll just list here. So here's a hospital operating theatre. The guy stood next to the table is a neurosurgeon. And he was explaining to me that most neurosurgery is actually near to the spinal cord and on the spinal cord, so rather than in the brain. So he, if he can feel vibration in the operating theatre, you know, it's a no go. He can't work. Um, offices are a big problem, people walking around, you sat at your desk, <coughs> and, you know, your floor's bouncing, your monitor's bouncing, really distracting. And these long, slender staircases are a big problem as well. So these are vibration issues that, uh, <coughs> excuse me, that uh, are commonly around and really my work has two key objectives. The first one is actually to develop uh, new ways in which we can control uh, vibrations in a reasonably cost-effective uh, and efficient manner. But uh, probably looking more to the future, though, um, what we want to do is to develop enabling technologies to uh, enable f uh, more slender, more efficient stru structures in the future. Most structures these days, civil structures, actually, the slenderness is government governed by vibration rather than by deflections or, or, or strength. Um, so really, if we want to push slenderness and make uh, more efficient use of materials, we really need to be looking at vibration control technologies. So my inspiration actually comes from uh, a lot of other fields of engineering uh, that have had to deal with vibration issues for much longer. So here we have a car suspension, which is uh, using magnetorheological fluids. These, uh, f this, so this is essentially a piston. Uh, so a viscous damper that can change its uh, properties in real time. Um, here's an active suspension system for a vehicle. There's a little video here to show the effectiveness. This is a regular suspension. And this is the active suspension on the same car. So a big difference. And just in case you thought it was the car suspension that was not very good, here's a Porsche. <laughs> <laughs> Demonstrating that really uh, anything would suffer. So... <laughs> Active noise cancelling headphones, great on uh, long long haul uh, flights. And this is a, a de Havilland uh, Dash 8Q aircraft. Q stands for quiet because it has an active noise cancelling system within the cabin. So, you know, all these other branches of engineering are using uh, noise and vibration control technologies. So, really, that's uh, part of the uh, inspiration for my own work. So, there's various technologies available. Um, passive technologies are kind of traditional, uh, they're easy but not particularly effective. Um, there's active control technologies where we're putting loads into our structure which are designed to counteract the vibrations that we're experiencing. I'm going to talk a bit more about that. There's semi-active which are a bit like passive devices but they can change their properties in real time like that car suspension that I showed you. And uh, hybrid techniques are a combination of uh, some of the above. So um, I'm going to talk a little bit more about active control and use a structure that's a little bit closer to home, actually. Um, so I'm going to talk a about a case study of uh, a walkway in the Forum. So we've been doing a little bit, little bit of work there since we've arrived. I do have to stress the structure is not problematic. 
it's just interesting. So <laughs> please don't go sending emails to estates saying what's going on here. So it's, it's absolutely fine, but it is, it is lively and it is interesting from that point of view. So you've probably walked under this a million times. So this is as you go through the revolving doors at the front, uh, you've got this pedestrian walkway, which is actually supported on these columns here and then by the slab, the floor slab on the other side. It's about, if I recall rightly, about 15 metre span and it's quite, uh, you can feel the vibrations. If you stop in the middle and wait for people to walk past, you will feel it vibrating. So we implemented an active control system on it. So essentially the way active control works, we've got our structure uh, and we've got a source of excitation which is generally a person w or more, more than one person walking across the uh, bridge and we measure the vibrations. So we've got a sensor on the bridge, picks up the vibrations, we take that signal, we process it with a controller and then we use that to drive an actuator or a shaker which puts a force back into the structure and of course these things are additive and hopefully uh, if we've done our sums right we'll be able to cancel out the vibration that came from the pedestrian. So, uh, so here's just a, a general view of some of the vibration testing that we did. So we've actually got three shakers on the walkway and a whole load of sensors. And what we're doing here, we've got two shakers used to control the bridge and we've got another shaker which is there to make some measurements. And here's a typical measurement that we got from that testing. So uh, this is a so-called frequency response function and basically the plot shows what amount of acceleration you get for a unit force input. So the red line shows we've got some big amplifications at resonance. You all know what resonance is, I'm not going to explain that. Um, but we've got some big amplifications and that means that if you walk at frequencies that are tuned to those frequencies, you're going to get a large level of response. So we then put our control system on and uh, we can reduce very, very significantly the amount of vibration. So it comes down by about a factor of more than 10. So very effective. Now, just to show you the system in operation, this is some, OK, shakers in slightly different location at this point, uh, but some general walking around. So we've got this accelerometer on the bridge here. It's measuring the vibrations. It's generating a drive signal, and then these shakers are actually putting a force back into the structure in order to reduce um, the accelerations. Here's another test which is um, a controlled walking test. So I'm actually walking here with a metronome and I've tuned my pacing rate to, uh, uh, to correspond with uh, a subharmonic of one of the natural frequencies. What that means is it's a worst case scenario essentially. And so we, we repeat that with and without the control system running. And so the grey plot here is acceleration response. Two minutes, OK. The grey plot here is the acceleration response uh, without the controller running. And the black plot is acceleration response with the controller running. So a very clear uh, reduction in the response of the structure, which is good. Now, I don't know if you're... Uh, in the forum uh, in the early part of July, but you might have seen these boxes sitting on the walkway for three days. Um, actually, these are just covering up the shakers. And what we did, we, we did, because we, it's one thing to do kind of measurements, controlled measurements, but what really matters is how does it perform in real life. Okay, so we had, you know, the bridge was open, there were people walking around, we monitored for three complete days, uh, one day without control, two days with a couple of different control algorithms. Um, and, uh, and we wanted to mo monitor and see how effective the system was. And this plot is something called vibration dose value. I'm not going to explain how it's derived, but essentially it's a cumulative measure of vibration throughout the day. So basically the higher it is, the more vibration you've experienced, the more likely you're likely to be annoyed by it. Um, we, met, we monitored three different points. The most important one, of course, is mid-span, which is this grey line here for the uncontrolled. And uh, with the control, so uh, this level of response has actually been brought down very significantly to here. So this goes from, um, well, we've got the actual numbers at the top, but you can see from the plot um, a very significant reduction. 
So this is far better than can be achieved with conventional technologies like tube mass dampers and viscous dampers. And uh, so as such, it's a, a very attractive technology. So future trends, well, the trend is always in, well, in civil engineering, but other branches of engineering, lighter, taller, stronger, uh, sorry, longer, more slender. It, it, we're always pushing to kind of uh, push the envelope. We need to make more efficient use of resources and we need more high quality vibration environments. So microchip manufacture, scientific instrumentation can be very sensitive to vibrations. We need to control them. So all of these things are going to drive the demand for ever more sophisticated ways of controlling civil structures. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs>